Hey everybody, I am going to respond to a question that Iva posted way back when I was in Arkansas, and I did a video in which I mentioned not identifying as an atheist anymore. So, she writes, Can you expand a bit on former atheist, or maybe point to a video that explains how and why you went from atheist to agnostic? Thanks. So, first let's have a look at a chart. This, I think, comes from Dawkins or, you know, people of his, uh, his ilk, Richard Dawkins, of course, uh, who, who, for me, when I was in college in the 90s, uh, Dawkins was a very influential figure for me. I absolutely loved and got great value from the books The Selfish Gene, The Blind Watchmaker, and The Extended Phenotype. These are largely talking about how evolution, a blind, purposeless, process of selection according to fitness in the environment and random mutation can generate very complex organisms. Uh, this is, it's like a career-long refutation of the Paley's watch argument, which is the argument that says if you're walking in the wilderness and you look down and you find a watch, it's got all of these small machined parts that clearly fit together, that has a function, it was made by somebody. You can tell that it had a designer and a purpose in mind. And, you know, compared to a watch, a human body, is far more complex, fiendishly complex. You know, the, the human neocortex, as Terence McKenna liked to say, uh, is the most ram densely ramified and complexified object in the known universe. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, I, I mention all that to say that I came from a position of being a Dawkins fan. I have met the man, uh, also a Doctor Who fan, and his wife was an actress on Doctor Who, met her too. Um, Fun. I, I, I like that. And then when the whole New Atheist thing hit, I, I guess it started with Sam Harris publishing a Letter to a Christian Nation, which I've not read. Dawkins, uh, Christopher Hitchens, who you know I like for a lot of reasons, but I think his, his atheism was strident. Uh, and uh, Daniel Dennett, you know, who I'd read a lot of Dennett stuff. Uh, you know, he's a philosopher, a philosophy professor, and I'd read a lot of his material uh, as a grad student, you know, a philosophy grad student. So I really liked Dawkins, and to see all of these guys come together under the banner of new atheism, and it's just this sort of tired, flat-footed, tribal, you know, antagonism towards Christianity. Now, I, I understand a lot of people who are not Christians have been abused by Christians. People who are not Muslims, Buddhists, uh, you know, whatever, Hindus have been abused when they were the minority in a larger, in a community that was dominated by a particular faith. Yeah, it happens. It's not unique to religion. Uh, but my own position is agnostic. But look at this chart. Agnosticism, or basically um, epistemology. How do we know? What constitutes knowledge? What constitutes evidence? That's one axis on this graph. The other axis is belief, or you could say uh, ontology. You know, what exists? What is real? The agnostic theist category doesn't make much sense to me, except as I understand that, you know, there is not sufficient evidence in a rationalist framework to conclude that God is real, but I have faith. I believe anyway because I was raised that way, because I've had experiences, or because I just have a feeling, or because, you know, that's, that's the universe I prefer to inhabit. All the others, I guess also... <laughs> Uh, agnostic, well, atheism. Theism is the belief in God. Atheism is the lack of said belief. If you are an atheist, it doesn't mean that you insist that God doesn't exist. It means you just don't believe. There's the, the insistence that God does not exist, that we live in the Monday morning world, uh, you know, the rationalist material world of, you know, forces and objects and rules to govern their interactions and stuff just happens according to those rules. If you believe that, then to me, any sort of non-agnostic position to me is a faith-based position. If you just absolutely believe that there is no God, that the universe exists for, you know, no particular reason, it came into, <laughs> into being for no particular reason, uh, fine, you know, if that's, if that's the universe that makes sense to you, if that's where you can operate in, in confidence, uh, you know, and integrity, good. But I, I don't, 
I just don't see any reason to elevate your belief to some some exalted position, because from my perspective, there's no more evidence for it than evidence for theism. I mean, the, the point of both theism and atheism is that given our particular point of view and framework and context, they both they both seem to fit our observations of the world. Now, I've never seen anybody come back from the dead. I've never seen anybody multiply loaves and fishes and feed a multitude with what was supposed to be one kid's lunch. I've never seen that happen. So, you know, the, the biblical story doesn't fit my context. And I know that Christian apologists explain that away uh, with like, you know, there was a time when God was more active in the world and now he's pulled back, I think. But my larger point being this, I don't know. You know, you know the simulation hypothesis, the idea that we're living in some sort of ancestor simulation, uh, that, you know, baseline reality is, is far from here. Anytime you can, if, if baseline reality supports the possibility of conscious entities living in simulations, then chances are we're in a simulation, particularly if those simulations can stack. Like there can be a simulated reality full of conscious beings who themselves create simulations, which also have conscious beings in them. If that's possible, then just statistically speaking, you know, this is the Nick Bostrom argument, uh, it's extremely unlikely that we are living in baseline reality. But I can't tell. I don't know. Um, so to me, staking like an absolute conviction on whether or not we're in a simulation just doesn't seem to be justified. Now, I understand there are people who claim to have arguments that are evidence-based to say that we're not in a simulation. I don't understand those arguments. I don't have the equipment or the technical knowledge or the funding to double check you know, their, their claims. So to me, accepting such an argument would be an act of faith. And it would be motivated by, you know, a desire to be comfortable in a particular world, you know, and, and to insist that the world that I'm most comfortable operating in is the one that I'm actually operating in. But I don't know. I don't know. So I am agnostic. And there's, there's two kinds of agnosticism, as far as I'm concerned. There's strong and weak. The, the, weak agnostic, the weak agnostic says, I don't know. The strong agnostic says, you can't know. It is impossible to know. I'm a weak agnostic. I don't know. Maybe there is a way to be certain uh, that, is, that is, you know, epistemologically kosher. If there is, I don't know. I don't know what it is. So I just have to pick according to, you know, other criteria. And I listed them earlier. Being confident, being, you know, capable of navigating a particular type of world, uh, it making sense. For me, the world that makes sense is the rationalist, materialist world. You know, there are no gods, there are no demons, uh, there are no aliens who have visited Earth because those are just demons and fairies and shit. Um, and, you know, the, the world, the universe is rule governed. It, it operates predictably if you know the rules. Um, and as far as I can tell, science has figured out a great many of those rules. You know, all of them? No, <laughs> but a lot. And so the success of science and the ability to take scientific principles and use them to create novel and powerful technologies to me is a strong argument, or it's, it's, it's good, um, it's good evidence, you know, for the, the probable correctness of the rationalist, materialist, scientific view. But I've been to the Peruvian Amazon to drink ayahuasca on many occasions. And when you're in the Peruvian Amazon, in an ayahuasca ceremony, and the spirits are flying around, and people are reporting all kinds of encounters and whatnot, and you hear the voices speaking to you, well, it's like this meme. <laughs> CrossFit, huh, says the very muscular chimp. That's cute. You know, that's what the, uh, the ayahuasca uh, entities say to me, you know, when I'm rehearsing my rationalist, materialist um, perspective. They say, oh, atheist, huh? <laughs> that's cute. <laughs> you know, there are contexts where it just doesn't apply. It doesn't fly, it doesn't make sense, doesn't make your life better. Uh, but you know, as far as I can tell, in the you know, the modern, hyper-connected, computerized, motorized, industrial, post-industrial, uh, globalized world, rationalist materialism is probably a pretty good starting point. You're probably going to get your best results from that. But then there's you know, also the uh, TSW moments for people who practice, you know, ritual magic or other forms of uh, sorcery. <laughs> You know, using non-material means to uh, improve your situation in the world. 
I've had experiences. I mean, you know, outside of the psychedelic context, outside of the shamanistic context of South America, just operating in, in this world, this, you know, this world where rationalist materialism seems to get me pretty far, I've had experiences that seem pretty weird. Is it possible that what seemed like uh, the universe doing things, you know, to help me out or to hinder me uh, is, is an illusion or a delusion? I hate that word, delusion. It means uh, incorrect and I hate you. <laughs> but, yeah, sure, it could be a delusion. I don't know. So I'm agnostic. So the point of the graph, you know, the, the four quadrant graph, is to say that atheism or theism and Gnosticism and ag agnosticism, uh, these don't contradict one another. I mean, to say I used to consider myself an atheist, but now I'm an agnostic, it's a political move. It's a public relations move. It's basically saying, look, I know people like Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris and Daniel Dennett and, you know, the late Christopher Hitchens. When you get them on the topic of religion, they have this really tired, sort of obstinate, you know, self-aggrandizing certainty that is, to my mind, unjustified. But, you know, it's cultural for them. They're angry. Like Richard Dawkins, you know, he got divorced, he had a young daughter, he wanted his daughter, he did not want his daughter to be indoctrinated with Christian memes when she was young and susceptible to them, and against his wishes, his ex-wife raised her Catholic. Yeah, I could see being pissed off at Christians for your whole fucking life over something like that. But from my perspective, religion is just something that people do. It's kind of like forming communities. It's kind of like forming hierarchies. It's kind of like the division of labor or the specialization of labor. It's just something that humans do to organize themselves. Now, you might say it's atavistic, that it's out of date, that we should move on to something better. But here I would invoke the concept of Chesterton's, Chesterton's fence, which is to say, you come across a fence, you're in an unknown environment. You're, you're walking across, or you maybe you've recently purchased some land, a, a big tract of land, and you notice a fence. You don't know why it's there. Well, the heedless thing to do is to tear it down, because it doesn't suit your purposes, it doesn't suit your vision for what this land should be, but you don't know why it was erected in the first place. So a sort of precautionary principle is, if you don't know why it was put there to begin with, leave it. It's probably serving some useful function. I, I see religion like that. Yeah, it definitely has its failure modes. It definitely has its dark side. But I think particularly in the United States, which is, you know, compared to Europe, still a very religious place. You know, people are still gathering in churches uh, and forming community on around the bonds of religion. I think it probably does more good than harm. I don't participate in it because I don't literally believe. And, you know, I sometimes feel that that's a loss, that that's a handicap on my part that I don't believe. But at the same time, I don't want to believe, you know? So, yes, saying that I identify as an agnostic rather than an atheist is not any sort of logical position because the two are not in conflict. It's basically just distancing myself from obnoxious atheists. I'm not one of them. I don't want to talk about religion. You know, if you have very fixed views, if it's, if it's, if it's important to you that your views be if not respected, at least not challenged or denigrated, fine. I'm, I am no, I have no truck. I have no interest in undermining your faith or your social solidarity with your fellow theists. It, fine. I don't care. <laughs> you know? Now, if you want to use religion as an excuse to pass laws which impinge upon the liberties of non-theists, well, eh, that's a problem. That's a problem. If you do that, you're just being authoritarian and fuck you, you know? Mind your own goddamn business. If you want to pass laws which force people who don't believe what you believe to behave as if they did, fuck you. You are, I don't want to say fascist, I hate that word, but you are being authoritarian, you know, in, in a very unconscious way, in a very, you know, oppress the people who don't believe as I do way. Fuck that. That's garbage. But at the same time, somebody who, you know, picks a fight at Thanksgiving dinner over prayer, fuck you too. You know, that turkey's too good for you. Eat shit. That is just, I mean, if you're 15, fine. But if you're 35, grow the fuck up. Most people are religious. Most people believe in God or spirits or something. 
that's not going to change no matter what a dick you are. No matter how much of an asshole you become on this issue, most people are not going to change their point of view. They're just going to think of you as an asshole and they will be correct. So, you know, there's my position on atheism versus theism. All right. <laughs>